Thank you very much, Mark, for that wonderful introduction. I'm, the only way is down from there, really. So <laughs> I hope you'll find what I have to say uh, interesting and exciting. Um, the title is deliberately uh, sort of fairly um, open to uh, different interpretations, I suppose, because numeracy in the workplace, well, you know, what is numeracy? What's the workplace? Workplaces vary enormously, as we know. Um, numeracy is a highly contested uh, topic and concept in itself as well. So there's a lot to be said about numeracy in the workplace. And, you know, I've, I've prepared a talk lasting about three and a half hours, but don't worry, I've cut it down. <laughs> so there will be time for questions. So that's the, the topic. So I thought I'd start with the really hot potato. If I had, oh, you know, 10 cents for every time somebody's asked me what is numeracy, I'd be a very rich woman. Um, so I thought it would be helpful just to start with some uh, definitions there. Uh, the first one is the one that's used in the Adult Literacy and Life Skills Survey, uh, which was done in New Zealand in 2006. And I'll say a bit more about that in a moment. And it's a good, straightforward thing. Numeracy, the knowledge and skills required to effectively manage the mathematical demands of di diverse situations leaves a lot to be interpreted, of course, because those diverse situations could be many and various. So I thought it might be helpful to offer my own uh, definition, which has also been taken up quite a lot, but uh, it is not in the not part of the all survey, but is maybe in the same sort of part of the forest, perhaps. Um, to be numerate means to be competent, confident, and comfortable with one's judgments, on whether to use mathematics in a particular situation, and if so, what mathematics to use, how to do it, what degree of accuracy is appropriate, and what the answer means in relation to the context. And I, I came up with that definition under duress some years ago. It was published in 2000 in, in a book in the USA, and the editors wouldn't let me get away without defining numeracy. So that's the one I came up with, and I, I'm pleased to say I think it's rather stood the test of time, and some research which I'll be talking about later on numeracy for nursing, um, you know, we actually used it and found it a very useful sort of framework for thinking, well, you know, does this count as numeracy or doesn't it? So, okay, if that's what numeracy is, and there's a lot of argument about that, by the way, but passing over that... Um, because some people would say it's just number skills, it's just arithmetic, it's just this, just that. Um, and the definitions I've just shown you are deliberately much broader than that. So what are workplace numeracy skills? Now there's a whole set of different uh, ways of defining those as well. This is a fairly uh, well accepted, I would say, list. And as far as lists go, I offer it to you um, for your consideration, um, it's, it's more than calculation. That's, that's one of the things. People often think numeracy, numbers, just numbers. Um, you know, use of ratio and proportion, things around communication of mathematically related ideas, recognition of patterns and anomalies with measurement and data. This is a long way from just simple arithmetic. So workplace numeracy skills are embedded, to use a favourite New Zealand word, in the workplace in which they occur. So um, you may or may not recognise some of those on the list as things which relate to, to, to workplaces you're familiar with. Just pick out the use of co computers stroke technology in relation to mathematical tasks, um, obviously an increasingly important area and one which has been picked up as one of the markers of um, being sort of successful in literacy and numeracy terms is computer use at home and at work. So it's another all survey piece of information. So what's the score in New Zealand? Uh, the most recent international survey was the Adult Literacy and Life Skills Survey. I'm very pleased to say that the uh, successor survey, PIAC, has just been announced that New Zealand will be taking part in that. I'm um, delighted to hear that because it will mean that there's a comparison possible from IELTS through all, IELTS was 1996, all 10 years later, 
and now uh, in, I think it'll be 2014, David, yes, the PIAC survey. So, so this is the most recent data we have anyway, population <coughs> data. And it found that there was a serious problem of uh, poor numeracy amongst New Zealand adults <coughs> aged 16 to 65. Those ages chosen because they're working age. So 51% of uh, New Zealand adults have numeracy skills below those deemed necessary to participate fully in a modern <coughs> high-skilled economy and lower than those deemed necessary for everyday life. Māori and Pacifica adults overrepresented in these groups and stark regional variations. And thank you very much. The screen is now on. Great. <laughs> so um, just to sort of flesh that out a bit, really, what are the characteristics of groups with both low prose literacy and numeracy? This is all levels one and two. Um, it tends to be people who have lower secondary education or less, not surprising perhaps. Um, they're not involved in, or not currently involved in taking formal or non-formal courses. Um, even if they're employed, they're not using a computer at work, the point I mentioned just now. Um, they tend to be clustered in uh, following industries, wholesale and retail trade, transport and communications, manufacturing, construction, and so on. They're not well off, an annual gross personal income of less than $40,000, and so on. So there's a whole list of characteristics which are uh, discoverable through analysis of the international survey, and it'll be very interesting to see how much change there's been um, when the PIAC data come in. Oh, and just at the bottom, I point out that being female is a marker for uh, problems with numeracy. <laughs> So, looking particularly at numeracy, some, some more detail there. Um, unsurprisingly, greater numeracy skills strongly associated with higher levels of educational participation. Um, so the education factors, um, you know, as one might expect, people with higher numeracy skill were more likely to participate in non-formal upskilling than those with low numeracy skill and people with low numeracy skill who self-assessed as having low numeracy skill were less likely to, to participate, participate in formal upskilling than the rest of the adult population. So the education um, detail there on numeracy, I think, isn't all that surprising. Um, maybe also the work and income data that employed people and students had the greatest skill in numeracy. The retired and homemakers had less and the unemployed the least. This ties in very much with research from where I'm from, the UK, and the British birth cohort studies, where there was a very interesting report brought out a few years ago um, called Use It or Lose It, which was about the importance of actually being in the labour market and using um, numeracy skills in order to keep them going. <laughs> so uh, that's quite an important point, I think. Um, if you're better off, you're likely to have higher numeracy skills than the rest of the adult population. Um, the occupation data, uh, professionals had the highest skills, those in the elementary occupations the lowest, and service and sales workers made up the greatest proportions of those with low numeracy skill. So that is the message to us all to check our change, obviously. Um, but again, maybe not terribly surprising. Within industry, um, the industries, agriculture and fisheries, had the lowest numeracy skill overall. Finance, real estate, health and education industries had the highest, but health and education had the lowest percentages with, with the largest percentages rather with low numeracy skill and the largest percentages of employees with high numeracy skill. So a very polarised picture there.